I feel like I am never going to stop bringing this up. I'm never going to stop bringing up how horrible Nancy Pelosi is as a leader. And the reason why I am going to continuously do this is because I think we need to remind members of the Democratic Party elite, their loyalists, namely people like Whoopi Goldberg, people like Soledad O'Brien, who forcefully condemned progressives that didn't want her to become speaker again. They called us ageist, they called us sexist, but time and again she has proven that she is not qualified to be a leader because she doesn't stand up for the party, she doesn't stand up for her caucus, and all she's doing is the bidding of the Democratic Party's donors. The point of a political party is to represent its base, but all she's doing is representing the party's donors. That defeats the whole purpose of a political party because the point of a party is you join together with other like-minded individuals to pursue political goals. But all she's doing is protecting the corporate status quo. And she showed how useless she is again by issuing this milquetoast statement about Ilhan Omar after Donald Trump incited hatred against her and she received death threats. Here's what she said about that. The memory of 9-11 is sacred ground and any discussion of it must be done with reverence. The president shouldn't use painful images of 9-11 for a political attack. As we visit our troops in Stuttgart to thank them and be briefed by them, we honor our first responsibility as leaders to protect and defend the American people. It is wrong for the president as commander in chief to fan the flames to make anyone less safe. So first of all, she didn't even bother to include Ilhan Omar's name there. Second of all, she is kind of tacitly legitimizing Donald Trump and Dan Crenshaw's bad faith attack against Ilhan Omar. Which is not surprising because she also jumped on the bandwagon when Republicans and other bad faith actors were smearing her as an anti-Semite because she dared to call out the influence that AIPAC has. Which you all just proved to write a couple of weeks ago when you spoke at APEC and you and other members of Democratic Party leadership took shots at the newly elected members of Congress who are speaking out against APEC. So, I mean, this response, or really this non-response from Nancy Pelosi, it's not too surprising, but that doesn't mean it's any less disgusting, and I think that Rashida Tlai put it best. She said, they put us in photos when they want to show our party is diverse. However, when we ask to be at the table or speak up about issues that impact who we are, what we fight for, and why we ran in the first place, we are ignored. To truly honor our diversity is to never silence us. And that's exactly it. And another thing she did that proved that she shouldn't be leading the left-wing party is after meeting with Jeremy Corbyn, she met with other Labour MPs in Britain about, quote, why they left the Labour Party and the importance of standing unequivocally against anti-Semitism wherever it is found. So to give you some more context, what we saw happen to Ilhan Omar is the exact same thing that Labour MPs did and really conservative MPs did to Jeremy Corbyn in the UK because basically he chose to stand up for Palestinian rights. He was smeared as an anti-Semite and now she is co-signing onto that attack because understand the hallmark of Western neoliberalism is basically to weaponize identity politics to use basically against the left because the left in the uk the left in america we're making policy-based substantive critiques of neoliberal centrists and they don't like it so the way that they make themselves seem more liberal is by lobbying these bad faith identity-based attacks against us when obviously as rashida Tlaib points out it's to hide their own shortcomings And I want to play some audio from a recent interview she did with CBS News. I can't actually play the video footage because it's basically going to guarantee that I get a copyright claim on it. But um, I want to play the audio. It's really short. It's like 56 seconds because she makes it very clear where she stands. Uh, She doesn't like progressives and she's dismissing the influence that they have, even if they're having a pretty significant influence on American dialogue at large. So you are contending with a group in Congress over here on the left flank are these self-described socialists, on the right these moderates, and you yourself said that you're the only one who can unify everybody. And the question is, can you? 
by and large, uh, whatever orientation they came to Congress with, they know that we have to hold the center, that we have to be, go down the mainstream. They know uh, that? They do. But it doesn't look like that. It looks as if it, you're, it's fractured. She likes to minimize the conflicts within her caucus between the moderates and the progressives. You have these wings, AOC and her group on one side. That's like five people. No, it's the progressive group. It's more than well, the five. I'm a progressive, yeah. That's absurd. What she's saying is incredible. It's incredible. She's so full of shit. This is what she said. Progressives, quote, know that we have to hold the center that we have to go down the mainstream. Hey, Nancy, have you looked at a single poll within the last two years? Progressives are the mainstream. Medicare for all, a federal jobs guarantee, legalizing marijuana, Green New Deal. These are all policy positions that are overwhelmingly popular, that are, supporting, that are supported by the American people. So progressives are the mainstream. You're not doing anything that is mainstream. All you're doing is you're protecting the status quo, which is not the mainstream. Part of the reason why Donald Trump got elected is because the establishment has failed Americans. Part of the reason why Jair Bolsonaro got elected in Brazil is because the status quo failed Brazilians. So we're seeing the status quo fail in country after country. The establishment lose legitimacy and... Yet, centrists like Nancy Pelosi are going to claim that they're the mainstream. You're not the mainstream. Now, when she was questioned about her minimization of the intra-party conflict that's going on currently between progressives and centrists, she says this about progressives. That's like five people. That's like five people, so we shouldn't have to listen to them. She also says, oh, but I'm a progressive. Are you now? So it's like five people, but you're part of the five people do you understand what you're even saying all that she says at this point is nonsense it's incoherent it's borderline gibberish and all she espouses are platitudes nancy pelosi is so full of shit so i really hope that people like whoopi goldberg and soledad o'brien pay close attention and understand that we pushed back when they called us sexist and ageist for opposing her bid for the speakership because this is why we don't like Nancy Pelosi. It's because she is doing the bidding of corporate America shamelessly so. But the good news is that we can actually oppose Nancy Pelosi. She already is the speaker, but we can oppose her in a meaningful way because she has a primary challenger named Shahid Batar, who is actually a true progressive. Not only does he support Medicare for All and pledges to sign on to Jayapal's Medicare for All bill, but he also wants to cut military spending and close our overseas military bases. So if you want to support him, if you want to give progressives a chance to finally oust Nancy Pelosi, this is how you do it. You can go to shahidforchange.us and you can sign up to volunteer. You can support him and understand that successfully primarying a member of the Democratic Party's leadership is going to be very difficult. It may seem as if it's easy since AOC just did it and she successfully ousted a member of Democratic Party leadership, but it is going to be incredibly difficult. But as we all know, Michaela Wilkes is primarying Steny Hoyer, and now Shahid Batar is primarying Nancy Pelosi. It's going to be tough. So if you truly want to get Nancy Pelosi out and get someone who's progressive in and give us the opportunity to get someone who is going to be speaker, who's actually going to represent progressives, then you need to support Shahid Batar because Nancy Pelosi is not going to leave willingly. She's going to cling to power for dear life and she will never let go unless you force her from power so that's why you need to support shahid batar and understand that this is why we are against nancy pelosi it has nothing to do with ageism it has nothing to do with sexism we oppose her for policy based reasons and also really for political reasons it's because she is unwilling to come to the defense of her own caucus as Ilhan Omar 
is receiving death threats because of Donald Trump inciting hatred against her. What does she do? She releases this milk toast response, which kind of tacitly legitimizes what Donald Trump was saying, his bad faith smear against her. So Nancy Pelosi is full of shit. She is horrible. And we should all be working together to oust her from power. You could support the Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast. Sad. <laughs>